My name is Daniel Sands, and at Fade to Black, I am one of the co-founders and owners, and uh, much like Zachary, pretty much um, take part in all the day-to-day -day activity, whether it be scheduling shoots, planning shoots, writing scripts, editing, shooting. Um, every day is a little bit different. Some days we're out in the field or could spend a week in the edit room. I'm kind of like a jack of all trades. We take part in everything in everyday activity at the company. Um, I was actually born in Mexico City. Uh, my parents at the time were living there for a couple years working for a computer company, a sales company. And I was born there and um, lived there until I was about three. And we moved around a little bit. We um, moved to Texas, lived there for seven years. Then um, my dad got transferred to Long Island, and after four years, we came down here to Florida in 1993. So I was, I've pretty much spent the majority of my life down here in Florida. I, as a kid, I loved movies, and I wanted to make movies, you know, like many kids my age at the time. Uh, the only problem, though, is my father had a video camera, but I was not allowed to touch it. And it was probably a smart decision not to let me run it, because who knows, I probably would have broken it or something. So. I had to find other outlets of creativity. You know, I worked on animations. I played movies with friends, and we would play director, you know, we'd recreate films. I would like to write films out in the intention of, oh, well, I'll figure out the filming part later. Or maybe my dad could run the camera later, or something like that. When I got to about high school age, I kind of went back to my dad's old camera, which he wasn't using anymore, and then I started to play around with it. And it, it was like crack once I picked it up. You know, I started filming everything and anything, and let me try this shot. Or, Will this effect work, or what, what can I do to make this creative? And um, it was pretty much, once I got my hands on it, I just kind of took it and ran. If I had to pick one, uh, it's probably back in 1989, right after Ghostbusters 2 came out. My sister and I were all about that movie. We loved it so much, we watched it repeatedly, and we were too impatient to wait for a third one. So we decided, hey, we're gonna make our own. So we spent, it was during the summer, we spent a couple days down in our basement with stuffed animals and we had just moved into this house and we had a bunch of cardboard boxes so we built sets and we would just reenact the movie and when we were ready, uh, we had my dad run the camera. It's, it's bad, it's really bad, but it was fun because, you know, we were making our own film this time and got bitten by the creative bug and what we could do with video, but uh, it's, it's, it's pretty horrendous. We... Uh, worked with a radio station to do an independent film and they chose a winning script and they gave it to us and we had to film it You know, it was a monster movie and it had all these special effects So we kind of had to work with them for a while to tone it down and try to make it a little more practical to shoot But I'd have to say it was one of my favorite ones because the, the challenge was immense We had a very quick deadline. We had a large cast to work with and most of the you know We're talking radio station personalities, so they have schedules. They work really really early and by the time we got them at the end of the day, you know, they were tired, so we had just a short amount of time to work with them. But once with the pressure aside, it was extremely creative. We had a lot of problems we had to solve, and we, we kind of came up with different solutions. We had, you know, puppets in the works. It was a lot of sleepless nights, but at the very end, you know, we sat down, we watched a movie, and we were like, wow, we made that. And I'll still put it on from time to time. It's, it's you know, it's, it's, a, it's aged and it's dated, but it, it was... Probably one of my favorite experiences and one of the best projects I, I thought we worked on. So when when we delivered it to the to the radio station, you know they were a sponsor of the Fort Lauderdale Film Festival. So we actually got our film played as was one of the features, and not only that, it was actually played twice. We had two screenings, so it was kind of fun. Like we went out there, you know, all our friends came. We got a bunch of tickets. We brought our friends and. Our families came out and we got to the theater down in Los Solos and, um, and it was kind of overwhelming because we're like, okay, this is kind of our little mini red carpet event. This is kind of fun. All, all that hard work paid off and we're having fun with it. And then our logo comes up on the screen. You know, our anime logo comes up, the crowd got quiet and I was just like, whoa, I, I actually got chills because I'm like, that's when it hit me. We're, our project is up on the screen and and just it was just an amazing experience just to sit there and watch and realize everyone's here for this and I want to do more of this. I mean, it was definitely getting a taste of something, you know, to make to let me know I was hungry for more. So it was quite an emotional experience. I want to make movies, you know, I want to tell stories. I love video production and I love this company because we get to work with video all day. We get to tell stories all day long. Client comes to us, every project's different. You know, one day we're working on a health video telling this story, other, other days we're actually shooting like a, a play or, or someone else's film idea. And it's, it's great because I think ultimately, I think it would be fantastic that Zach and I can make our own stories. You know, we've got projects that we work on here and there. The thrill of coming up with an idea, developing it, 
growing it into something where we can go and show and say, look, we made this. One would be listen more. Listen to my colleagues, listen to people who've been experienced and who had done what we had done. We had people warning us saying, you know, before you start a business, why don't you go work for a couple places first? Or, you know, don't go buy, you know, five cameras or don't go buy all this and this and this, and this when you need that. So I would probably go back to my younger self and say, you know, give them a heads up saying streamline that costs go up faster than you know, work builds up faster than you know. So take it in smaller bites. Younger self, if you're watching this, which you're probably not because that'd be weird, small steps. Get to your comfort zone, take one step out of it, master that, and repeat it. If I had to pick one, um, it would probably be The Karate Kid. As cheesy and corny as that may be, that was one of the movies that impacted me the hardest at such a young age. I didn't know what to expect. I was at, over at the house with some friends and they were playing hey, this movie's on. I'm like, okay, let's watch it. I don't know, it connected with me. I love the whole story of this kid just trying to get by, you know, new kid at school. Seeing how hard he had to work to overcome it, I found it very inspiring. And it also got me interested in the martial arts. I love the chemistry of the characters. I just, to me, it's one of, it's, it's a very genuine performance in my opinion. And just as a kid, I loved that film. And even as an adult now, I'll still find myself putting it on every month or so. Just, hey, just, it's a feel good movie. I feel good and I feel inspired and it energizes me. And I don't know, it's just a good uplifting underdog tale. It's more to a production than an idea. Just because you have a concept for a show or a movie, or you're like, hey, I want to do this, doesn't mean you're ready to do it. We've had countless customers sit in front of us and pitch us ideas, but it doesn't get beyond, hey, I want to do blank. Oh, great, sounds great, but um, what's your budget? Where's your, what's your demographic? How do you want to show it? Where is it going to be delivered? What kind of production do you want behind it? What's your tone? What's your mood? Most of the time, they don't have those answers, and you don't really have a project until you know what you want to do with it and what it's going to be. So I would really wish that a lot of people understood more about their goals and a lot of customers, I don't think, understand how prepared they need to be for a project because the, the there's it's more than just an idea. Everybody's got ideas, everyone has thoughts and concepts, but it, it takes more than that. I mean, you, you have to do your homework and you've got to be prepared or else the project's not going to have much substance to it. Well, I'm pretty much going to go have lunch and get back to work and maybe find out why we decided to put the Ghostbusters footage back in this because I didn't want anybody to see that. But um, yeah, 